Okay, so we're looking at PCL3 and we're trying to figure out the molecular geometry. We have a Lewis structure here and that gives us an idea of the two-dimensional structure where the electrons are, where the bonds are, but it doesn't tell us the shape. So we can think about this in terms of valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, that those atoms on the outside there and that lone pair of electrons are all going to push away from each other and that'll give us a three-dimensional shape. To help us predict that, we'll use the AXN notation. So A, that's our central phosphorus atom. We have one of those. X is the number of atoms attached to that central phosphorus atom. So we have three chlorines. And then N, that's the number of lone pair electrons, unbonded electron pairs. And we have that one right there above the phosphorus. So we'll put a one right here. So now that we have an AX3N, we can look that up on a table and tell the molecular geometry for PCL3. So as we go down our table here on the left, we see we have AX2, AX3, down to AX2N, AX2N2. And at the bottom we have AX3N, and that is trigonal pyramidal. It also gives bond angles of 109.5, and those are rather general. If we actually look at the molecule, we'll see that it looks like this, where the phosphorus is in the center, and we have floating above it that lone pair of electrons. And the angle that we're talking about is right here, and it actually turns out to be, when we look at experimental data, to be 100 degrees, not that 109.5. So the AXN notation gives us a good idea about the bond angles and a very good idea about the shape of the molecule. So PCL3 has the molecular geometry of trigonal pyramidal. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.